Good afternoon. Buenas tardes. Good to see everybody here. Uh, first of all, uh, to Charlie, to Ken, uh, to everybody who helped organize this event, uh, thank you very much for the invitation to be here. Uh, to everyone who is here, thank you all for the work that you do, not only uh, in your unions, um, in your companies, or in the public sector, but as advocates as well. As well. It's my pleasure to be here. Uh, so I'm Julian Castro. I know I've had the opportunity to meet a whole bunch of the folks here at different events over the last several months, but sometimes I feel like I have to wear a name tag because I have a twin brother. And uh, my twin brother, Joaquin, whom some of y'all may have seen on CNN or MSNBC because he's in politics too. He represents the 20th Congressional District. Joaquin always likes to say that the way to tell us apart is that I'm one minute uglier than he is. But that's not true. I'm a minute older. Uh, and jo uh, Joaquin and I grew up on the west side of San Antonio with my mother and my grandmother. My grandmother had come here in 1922 with her little sister when she was seven years old because they lost their parents and her closest relatives lived in Texas. Uh, she got yanked out of school when she was in elementary school and so she worked as a maid, a cook, and a babysitter for her entire career. She raised my mother as a single parent and my mom raised my brother and me as a single parent as well. Uh, my brother and I are proud products of the public schools of Texas, uh, and we had the opportunity to go away to college and to law school. We went together, of course, because I can't get rid of my brother, uh, and then come back home and become the first in our family to be professionals as lawyers and to go into public service. I represented San Antonio on the city council for four years, and then uh, eventually got to serve as mayor for five years until I got a phone call on uh, April 16, 2014 from President Obama. And I remember the date because it's not every day that the president calls you and asks you if you want a job. Uh, I had just driven through the drive through at Panda Express. And uh, you know how on your phone it says unknown or uh, block call? It said private. So if you ever get a phone call that says private, I hope that you'll answer the phone. And I hope that it'll be me on the other end of the line calling you. Uh, and then I served the last two and a half years of the administration as Secretary of Housing and Urban Development. During that time, I managed a department with a $48 billion budget, 8,000 employees, uh, 54 field offices across the country. And I had an opportunity to see how working men and women across this country are grappling with issues not only of housing, but making sure that their child can get a good education, that they can get decent, affordable health care, that they have a safe, decent uh, place to live, and something for retirement. And it is with tremendous respect and humility that I come before you. The AFL-CIO of Iowa that I know is doing such great work in trying to expand the numbers of people who are represented by unions. My vision for the future of our country is that in the years to come, our United States should be the smartest the healthiest, the fairest, and the most prosperous nation on earth. I spent the last seven months of this campaign talking about how we can get there. Everything from universal child care to pre-K for three and four year olds, paying teachers what they deserve and improving K through 12 education, investing in trade programs in high schools and partnerships with labor and community colleges and businesses, and also uh, ensuring that we make higher education uh, universal by going tuition-free at public state universities, community colleges, and job training and certification programs. I've talked about changing our healthcare system to one that is based off of Medicare, where we strengthen Medicare for the people who are on it, and then expand it to people who want it. And also recognize that if somebody has a strong plan that's solid, that they want to hold on to, that they be allowed to hold on to that, even while we make important changes and improvements in our healthcare system like ending the distinction between physical health care and mental health care and investing in mental health care the way that we should. I've spoken about the need to become a fairer nation, reforming criminal, our criminal justice system, investing in public defenders, in uh, sentencing reform, in cash bail reform, ensuring that our police can better work with communities so that no matter who you are, you're treated the same by police officers on the street. Uh, and passing the Equality Act and the Equal Rights Amendment so that no matter who you are, you can't be discriminated against in this country. And I have spoken about how to become a more prosperous nation. 
raising the minimum wage to at least $15 an hour. As the folks here know, uh, $15 an hour has been the rallying cry for a while, but really we need more than that. Uh, I believe that we should index, automatically index, our minimum wage going forward so that we don't need to go and fight every decade because it's been a decade since it was raised last time. We don't need to fight all the time to get that thing raised. And it's interesting that Congress always seems more willing to give it so, itself a pay raise than to raise the minimum wage for workers across the country. I also believe that we need to invest in the ability of labor unions to organize. I support the PRO Act on the private side so that we'll improve the ability to effectively organize <laughs> private sector labor. On the public sector side, I also support legislation to make it easier for unions to organize. As a former mayor, I know how important it is for people to be represented in the public sector. I also believe that we need to do things like appoint people to the National Labor Relations Board that believe in labor unions and that when the decisions get tough, they will understand the value of labor and make decisions that are consistent with that. If I'm elected president, I will appoint a secretary of labor who will champion the ability of labor unions to organize and crack down on companies that illegally try and stop people from organizing. I will also ensure that labor has a voice throughout the administration and work with labor organizations across the states to push states to do the right thing. I come from Texas, which is a right to work state. And, uh, Many folks in places like Texas and so many other states understand that they need a strong partner in Washington, D.C. to push a vision for a more fair, pro-worker approach in those states. I will do that if I'm elected. And finally, if we're going to be more prosperous, we also have to ensure that we do things like invest in housing that's affordable. Here in the Des Moines area, for instance, people have seen the rent keep going up and up. We have a rental affordability crisis. We have more people that are sleeping on the streets at night. I've put forward a housing plan that calls for significant investment in housing that's affordable to the middle class, to the working poor, and to the poor. And throughout this campaign, I have not forgotten about the people who are poor. We've talked a lot in the last couple of decades about the middle class and the working class for good reason. But I reject the notion that just because somebody is poor, that something is wrong with them. I believe that we need to champion an inclusive agenda for people who are struggling, who are trying to make it. We also have to tackle the most existential threat to the future of this nation, which is climate change. If I'm elected president, my first executive order will be to rejoin the Paris Climate Accord so that we lead again on sustainability. And then follow that up with an investment to create great jobs in the clean energy economy so that the United States and not China or another country leads when it comes to great jobs in the new energy economy. I would also work to get us down to net zero and get commitments from our allies and our adversaries around the world to work even harder to get to net zero at latest by 2050. And so I wanted to come here today and to thank you very much for having me. Thank you for the work that y'all are doing, your advocacy. Uh, in this campaign, my vision has been to continue to get stronger and stronger. I launched it seven months ago and I said that I would go everywhere. We've done that. I've pledged to visit all 50 states. My first trip right after I announced wasn't to Iowa or to New Hampshire, it was to San Juan, Puerto Rico, to tell the people of the island that everyone counts. That's the kind of America and leadership that we need in the years to come. From a president that believes he represents 37% of people who vote for him, his base, to a president who represents all Americans. From a president who can't be trusted to do the right thing in office, lacks integrity and decency, to a president that has demonstrated that. And from a president who wants to take us backward and tries to make this country something again, to a president that is looking forward to make us better than we've ever been in the future. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you very much. Thank you all so much, AFL-CIO.
I look forward to visiting with you all along the way. Thank you.